Okay, we were on the study guide on example, I mean, question two, the one whereby we're having the P as the parent and S as subsidiary. So we had done the elimination journals of the intra-group items together with the, together with the share capital. So now it was about the drafting of the consulted financial statement. So we turn to page 17 of the study guide or page 17 of the learning unit number. Now we are drafting the consulted statement of financial position for P limited group, which is gonna be found on page 15. So we had the goodwill. Remember we did, uh, we removed all the common item together with the intra group. So the goodwill was what the one remaining. You remember we were here, right? Last week on Saturday whereby we were doing the elimination of the loan of P limited and the loan of S limited. So since these are eliminated, now we can start drafting the consolidated uh, financial statement. So it means we're gonna have the asset section So since goodwill was created or was recognized, so we're gonna take this goodwill and then we record it in the asset section because it's now came into effect. So we're gonna have none uh, non current assets. Then we have a goodwill, which is how much it was, uh, 10,000. Then then we're going to have the for PPE. So our PPE, it will be the one for the parent and subsidiary. For, for the parent from the pre adjustment trailer balance, it was shown as PPE 50,000. So it will be 50,000 plus 60,000, the one for subsidiary. Fifty. Then plus 60, then they give us 110. Then we can close our non-current. So when we close our non-current, they give us an amount of 120. Then we proceed further to current assets. So our current assets, they will be trade receivable. The trade is available, which the one for subsidiary and the parent for the parent, it was 40. Then we add it with the one for subsidiary, which is 15,000. Then we close, then it means we have 55,000. Then we have the inventories. Inventory. For the parent, 20 plus for the subsidiary. Then we have 55. And then we have the cash and cash equivalent.
the cash and cash equivalent is how much? 25 and 58. should give us the 83. Then we can sum up the, the current asset, which they give us 193. Then we have total assets. So our total asset will be 120 and 193 which will be 313. Then we're going to go to the equity section and the liabilities. Liabilities. So we're going to have share capital, which do only the one for parent because the subsidiary one is gone. We eliminated it while we we're doing our analysis of shareholders plus the pro forma journals. Then we have the retained earnings, which will be only for the parent, but the one for subsidiary is also eliminated. Which is 80. Then we sum up the total equities. Okay, let me do this. You can say this is equity. So the equity will be 180. And then we go to the liabilities. The liabilities we have, it will be the non-current and current. And we start with non-current. So our non-current, it will be uh, the long-term borrowings. which it was the one shown in the pre-adjustment trial balance as if we go back there, there was say the long-term borrowings of 100,000 under P limited. So for S limited, there was no any long-term borrowings. So we only recognize the one for P, that's 100. Then we go to the current liabilities. On the current liabilities, we have the trade and other payables. Trade and other payables of how much was parent that's 15,000 plus the one for subsidiary, which is 18,000. Then when you add them all together, they give us 33. Then it means our total liabilities will be 133, because it will be the sum of all of this. 133. And then when we sum this and this for total equity and the liabilities, liabilities, they give us the value of 313. So we're all happy up to so far with that exercise question two we find any yes, question thank you, sir. 
Okay, so it means now we can proceed. Which I will close this. Then it will be from part of the learning unit number. I mean, that last for last week. So now we're going to proceed to X, the learning unit number four. I mean, number three, the consolidation of a partly owned subsidiary. So mostly this module will be focusing on the consolidation of partly owned subsidiary, whereby you as a parent, you don't acquire the full interest in the subsidiary. You only acquire a certain percentage. So now the certain percentage that you acquire will also determine your voting rights. So they say you should be able to consolidate the financial statement of a group of companies at the date of acquisition. So this is your object outcome of studying that by a particular uh, learning unit. So the concept is here to be partly owned subsidiary, proportional of ownership outside the owners and the non-controlling interest, the NCI. So if you remember when we we're doing the when we we're doing the our thingy, our analysis, we were not having that portion of NCI here. It was only total at and since so we're not having the NCI. So for this purpose of the learning unit that we are going to now, we're gonna have the NCI. Then they say introduction in learning unity we dealt only with the wholly owned subsidiary in other ways where the parent acquired the entire issue share capital of the subsidiary. However, there may be various reasons why it should be impossible for the parent to take up all the shares in the subsidiary. Some of the owners may not be prepared to sell their shares to the parent or the parent may not have sufficient funds to purchase all the shares. The other owners of the subsidiary are known as non-controlling interest or outside owners. Non-controlling owners may consist of ordinary owners and preference owners, which will be dealt more in the unit number nine. The consolidation of the same financial position of a partly owned subsidiary at the date of acquisition. The same rule apply for consolidation purposes, except that we now have to make provision for non-controlling owners interest in the profit of subsidiary. So if you can look at an example, we've got a P limited who have acquired shares in S limited. OK, hold on. There is someone who is unmute and I am hearing my echo in the background. So I don't know if the person is using a speaker or something. Can you mute, please? Thank you. So there is a P limited and S limited. So they tell us that uh, there's a 80% voting rights which are acquired by P limited into S. So the percentage which was not acquired by P for non-controlling will represent the 20% of the voting rights. So it means in all in all, P limited acquired 80% of the shares that was issued by S limited. To make provision for the non-controlling owners interest in the profit of the subsidiary, it is important to know how to calculate the percentage of interest in the subsidiary. So we've got example two on the study guide where they're going to show us how to calculate uh, that percentage. So hold on, I want to check something here. So if you go to the learning number three, which is indicated as page three, uh, we've got the following represent the concept statement of financial position of A limited and its subsidiary B limited, whereby we have financial we have a balance sheet. It shows the asset the PPE of 150 for A and 200 for B. Then we've got 80,000 ordinary shares at fair value, whereby the the pay value of this shares is equal 90,000. Then we have current asset of 110 for parent and 10,000 for B. So equity and the liabilities share capital ordinary shares is 200,000 shares for A and 100,000 shares for B, which means each share carry is valued at one rent. So the retained N is 50,000 and 30 respectively. The long term borrowing is 100,000 and 80,000. So now the question was calculated the interest of subsidiary, which it was acquired. So we're going to say to calculate it, we're going to say investment in B limited, which the investment in B limited is 90,000. We divide 
I mean, the investment will be limited to be represented by, in terms of shares, it will be 80,000 ordinary shares. So it's 80,000 ordinary shares are quite in be limited valuing 90,000. So 90,000 is the market value. So we'll say the investment will be limited to represent the 80,000 number of shares divided by the issued shares of be limited. So issued shares of be limited, it was 100,000 shares. So when you say 80,000 divided by 100,000 in terms of 100, it gives us the 80%, meaning that P or A limited acquired 80% of the shares in B limited. So the 20% which was not acquired, it will represent non-controlling interest. So it represents for those shares of the outsiders, excluding uh, the parent company. So we've got the example three. The following represents the constant statement of financial position of P limited and S limited. Statement of financial position as FT1 July 2004. We've got assets. PPE 150 and 200. We've got 35,000 ordinary shares at favor. So it means they acquired 35,000 shares with the favor of 75,000. So the shares capital, which was issued by P, is 100,000 shares. It means at two rand, it will be 200,000. And the 50,000 shares issued at two rand, it will be 100,000. The retained earnings is 50, the long term borrowings is. Uh, 50 and 30, and then the long-term borrow is 180. Required again. Calculate the parent interest in the subsidiary as follows. You're going to have the investment in S limited. So we invested in S limited by how much shares? By 35,000 ordinary shares. And then how much shares were issued by S limited? He issued uh, 50,000 shares. So we're going to say 35,000 divided by 50 times 100, which is give us that we are quite only 70% of the shares in S limited. So the 30% will represent the non-controlling interest. So as for wholly owned subsidiary, the following three situations may occur when a parent acquired an interest in the partially owned subsidiary. Acquire at net asset value, acquire at a premium, acquire at a discount. The example of four to six below illustration that may arise. So on example four, the acquisition of a partially owned subsidiary at net asset value. So it means in this case, the the acquisition will be equivalent to the net worth of the subsidiary. So let's see, we've got PPE. Okay, we've got a minimum financial position for the year ended 31 December 2009. Assets PPE is 160,000 and 160 again for B. Investment in B limited consists of 56,000 ordinary shares at fair value of 98,000. So the total that we paid is 98,000. The trade and other reasonable is 140 and 110. So the share capital consists of 100,000 ordinary shares at one run each equal 100,000 and 80,000 ordinary shares at one run each equal 80,000. The retained earnings is 120,000 for A limited and 60,000 for B limited. Trade and other payables represent 178 and 180. Now we follow the basic consultation procedure. We determine the percentage. We want to eliminate the common item and we do the consultations of the remaining. So now I'm going to share again the Excel sheet. OK, now we are drafting the example four. So in example four, we do the consultations. So the basic rule, as we know now, determine percentage, because now it's a partly owned subsidiary. I mean, it's a partly owned. Sorry, Steve. So we're gonna one, determine. Determine. <laughs> you determine the percentage acquired by the parent. Number two, we eliminate common items. So that one it will be after we drafted our analysis. So it means now we're going to also do analysis of shareholders. Analysis of shareholders. Then three, 
we do elimination of common items and four to consolidate the remaining. So now let's determine the percentage. So we're going to say investment in, we invest in who? Who are we investing in? In B Limited, sir. BLTD. Then we divide by the share capital. Share capital of BLTD. So note, this is only in shares. only in number of shares. So how much was the investment in B Limited in terms of number of shares? 56,000, right? And yeah. then the share, the share capital of B Limited was how much? Um, 80,000, sir. 80,000. So the percentage will be 56 divided by 80 times 100, give me 70% from my side. So it means our analysis, now we're gonna do the analysis. Two, analysis, analysis of our sh of shoulders will be as follows. It's gonna be total, then it have uh, at acquisition. Then it have since acquisition. Then it have non controlling interest. Man, controlling which normally it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be shown as an NCI just to save time. So this will be our NCI. So let's proceed. So at acquisition, we acquired the share capital, right? Of how much in value in B uh, in B limited? 80,000. 80, Not applicable. Oh, sorry, it can't be 80,000 here. Now, this this portion is it. Remember, we said here 70%. So this will be based on the 70%. So as this one. And then this part will be based on the 30%, the remaining. So now we're going to say 80,000 times 70% is how much? 56,000. 56,000. And then the remaining balance is how much? On the non-controlling, 24. 
Then we've got the retain earnings. Of how much in total? P60 from P sub P limited. Then the 70% of 60 will be how much? 42,000. So the difference in the balance will be 18,000. Now we can close this part. So let's close that part now. Which it will be forty thousand. Oh, twenty-four thousand. Is the person is there anyone who is delayed? Because I think the answer that I give is the very thing that already passed. So here we're going to have the addition of 56 plus 42 is 98, right? And then here it was the total of 140. Now, the purchase, the consideration given, the consideration given, this is in value. Consideration given in value, we paid how much to acquire uh, the investment in B Limited? We paid how much? 98. So we say 98,000 here. So the 140 here, they said 98,000. If you say 98,000, divided by 0.7, sorry. If you say 98,000, this 98 divided by 0, 70%, which it will be 98,000 divided by 0 0.7, it will give you 140 here. So this 140 came as a result of, uh, 98, divided by 0 0.7. Then, this is considered to be paid. So far, the 98,000 that we paid versus the 98,000 that the guy is waiting, it means we don't have any purchase difference. So it means our goodwill is zero. We help you, right? Yes. Okay, now let's proceed. We're gonna go to, it means we did step one, we did step two. Now we're gonna eliminate common items. So these things, they're gonna represent the common item to be eliminated. They qualify for elimination, this one. Let's proceed. So we draft the Proforma Journal. So we draft the Proforma Journal. Okay. Hold on for two seconds or so. A prof on our performer on our performer journal so we're gonna eliminate this uh, common item so we'll have share capital because share capital capital normally being credited but because we are taking it out it's gonna be debited so we're gonna have uh, debit credit 
capital. The share capital will be eliminated by how much? How much do we eliminate? It is six thousand. How much? Fifty-six thousand. Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. We, we, we eliminate the full amount. We're gonna eliminate this total. We eliminate this portion. This is the portion to be eliminated. So we eliminated this one. Okay, sorry, undo this. We eliminate this portion only for now, but you're gonna see how we're gonna do the other part. So we say on the share capital, David is 80,000. And then retain earnings. How much? 60. Then we have investment in B Limited. Which it will be how much we paid? 140, right? I mean, sorry, no. in, in, we paid 98. Because that's the amount we paid. We paid 98. On the credit side, so we can see this side and this side they are not equal. So this one, this this side, it gives us 140. However, on the credit side, we are sitting with 90, we are sitting with 98. So how much how much is remaining here, which is in short on the credit side? Thirty-two thousand. Yeah. So we are in, we are in, we are in short of forty-two thousand. So this 42,000, it correspond with this one. We happy? Yeah. And then this 42,000, it was called what? Non-controlling interest. So it means here we're gonna say on the credit side, we put non-controlling So this represents the outsiders, like out of the share, out, out of the shares acquired by A Limited, which he didn't acquire them in full in B. The other outsiders, they are having the shares to the value of this much. Like, are we clear up to so far? Any question with regard to this NCI thing? Any question? So no question, we are all fine, we are all clear. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. thank you. Proceed. So this will represent our NCI, which is gonna be the one to go to the SFP. So normally with this module, uh, you are recommended to show that this is SFP, this is a PL, stuff like that. So they prefer that you show that this one is going to go to the SFP when you do the journals. So all, all in all, this they represent the SFP. So this one is eliminated, this one is eliminated, this one is eliminated, but this one will be recognized. So it means this one will be recorded in the SFP when we'll be doing the statement of financial position in full, so we're gonna show that amount of 42,000. So this one will be recorded. Recorded in SFP, Statement of Financial Position. We're still clear, right? So since we did the elimination of the common item, now we can do the last part, we consolidate the remaining. So let's do the consolidation of the remaining. Remaining items. The consolidation of the remaining items will be as follows. We're going to have statement of financial position for the year ended. Let me wait for my Excel responding. A statement of financial position for the year ended.
A L T D statement of financial position for the year and that December two thousand and nine. 2009 then we have non-current assets or asset section so on the asset we have non-current assets so on the non-current asset we're going to have the ppe ppe our PPE for subsidiary is how much? On for the parent, sorry. One sixty. Then we add it with the one for thingy for subsidiary is also one sixty. One hundred sixty thousand. So they give us three twenty. Then we have. Current assets. On the current assets, on the current assets, we have a um, the trade and other receivable. Trade and other receivables to the value of the 140 for parent plus the 110 for subsidiary, which they give us. 250. Then we're going to add the total assets here. The total asset, when you sum up, it will be 570. Then we have equity, PD, and liabilities so on the equity and the liabilities we're going to start with equity then we have share capital share capital for parent only remember now it will be only parent for subsidiary is gone So the share capital of, of parent is how much? 100,000. And then uh, the retained earnings only, also for parent only? 120. 120. Then the sum up of this is to represent the 220. Then we go further we'll have a okay let's just leave it like this for now because this will represent the share capital alone so when you sum up this they will give us 120 then we remember what i said this thing that must go to the sfp now we're going to take it because sfp represent the same female financial position so since now we are doing the same statement financial position we have to include it now. So we're going to include it and then we say non controlling interest. Which is for D2. We are still happy up to so far. Yeah. OK, then we're going to have the liabilities. 
our liabilities is going to be the non current if we have non current non current liabilities if we have them do we have any long term loan i don't see it so it means here to be zero then we go to the current liabilities current liabilities which we have a trade and other payables trade and other payables for parent it's how much 178 plus the subsidiary they give us the value of Then now we're going to sum up all of this. When we sum up all of this, they give us 570, which is the same as that one. So 570. So this will be our total equity and the liabilities. BT and liabilities. We still clear up to so far? Yeah. Any Please question? Any question before now we're gonna go to the situation where now they could, there is a goodwill. We go to example five. So this was example four. Okay. Example four. Now we go to example five. So in example five, they say the acquisition of a partly owned subsidiary the premium. So it means now there is a good deal. So the following are average statement of financial position of a limited and its subsidiary be limited as at the end of nine which is the date in which acquirer, I mean, A limited acquired its interest in B limited. The SFP is shown as follows. PPE is 160, 160. In B limited, 64,000 ordinary shares value of and cost price of 140. The trade and other receivable is 98 and 110. The share capital ordinary shares 180. The retained N is 120 and 60. The trade and other payable is 178 and 180. Now we do the same rule that we did before. This rule is everywhere. As long as you are doing the consolidation, you're going to always have this rule to apply. So now we do the rule again. So we say determine the acquired interest. So our acquired interest, it will be how much investment in B limited is how much? In number of shares? 64,000. 64,000. And then the total number of shares which were issued by B Limited is how much? 80,000. So the 64 divided by 80, it gives us 0 0.8. Then you multiply by 100, which equal. 80%. We are all okay, right? Yes. Now we go to number two. What is step number two? What must we do now after determining this? Eliminate common items. Mm -hmm. oh, analysis. Let's do yeah. analysis. 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 So suppose the question comes straight and it says draft the consolidated statement of profit and loss only. Do not waste your time by doing analysis. There's nothing that you're going to gain there. 
So just shoot straight and do the consolidations. But if the question says draft the statement of financial position, is where now the analysis is going to be fit in. Do you get it? Hmm? I can't hear you. Your network is not that much clear. Repeat the statement. Uh, yeah, I was saying repeat what you said. Oh, I, I was saying when we are doing a question and the question says draft a statement of profit and loss. Am I still audible? Am I still audible? You are not able to do I think yes, the next Okay, I was saying if yeah. the question is, I was saying if the question says draft the statement of profit and loss, there is no need for you to draft the analysis of shareholders. Okay. And if the question says draft the statement of prof I mean statement of financial position, therefore analysis of shareholders is gonna be needed. Uh, okay, no tip. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. No All right. Cool. I also gonna post this thing on the chat here. You see it. So let's let's proceed. So if they want the minimum financial position, it means you have to draft the analysis of shareholders. But if they will say they draft the statement of profit and loss, you don't need to do that analysis. So now for our side, let's continue. We're gonna have a total. We're gonna have add acquisition. When I have uh, since acquisition, so since acquisition is everything that happened after we acquired the asset, I mean the interest in that particular person, then we're going to have NCI. I think you will see it more in learning number four or five somewhere there. So share capital. The share capital of B Limited is how much? Eighty thousand. Eighty. And then remember, here is hundred. Here is eight. Is percentage that we calculated? We said the percentage is eighty, right? Here it will be on eighty percent. Eighty percent. 20%. So the 80% of the 80,000 is how much? 64. So here it will be zero because we don't have anything to do with since. Then here it will be 16. So this column is only for things happened after acquisition, as far as they say since. So it's for things happened after acquisition. So let's proceed now. We have share capital and then the retained earnings. Is how much in total? 
60,000. And then the percentage of 60,000 in 80% is 48. And then the difference is 12. Then when we add this, they give us 140. So we're going to have 140 here. And then here 64 plus 48, they give us 112. So here we still have zero, nothing was happening. Then here we have 28. Then the consideration paid. How much did it pay to acquire the shares? 140,000, sir. We paid 140,000. 140. Then we say 140 minus 112, it gives us how much? 28,000. So the 28,000 since it's a by gain, it's a goodwill. So it means we, we the company was trading a good uh, way to the extent that we have a, we give it a buy gain. So if you want the value here, it's going to say, here's also 28. So if you say 140 divided by 80%, it's going to give you 168. You can verify it with your calculator to get this value. You say 140 divided by 0 0.8, it will give you this. So now, Here, we don't have anything to do with the purchase difference because it's still 28,000 here. So it's zero. And then the total, 168, 140, here it will be 28,000. Are we still in the same order, in the same line? Do we still understand each other? Yes, sir. All right. So we've done with number one, we've done with number two, we've done with number three. Now, oh, sorry, we've done with number one and number two. Now we have to do the elimination. So number three, the elimination. Elimination of common items or intra group is the same thing intra group transactions now we're going to do them in the form of a performance journal so please master this performance journal there's no way you're going to answer the question without it no ways performance journal It's going to have a debit and a credit. R. Then what do we eliminate in now? What are we eliminating? Common items, sir. Mm -hmm. What are those common items? Retained earnings. The good work. Share, share capital. Retained earnings. The retained earnings. Then the goodwill. So let's start here for now. The share capital elimination is 80,000. Yes. Is the total. And then the retained earnings, 60. Hello, what's happening? Okay. Then the goodwill does was recognized it's how much? 28,000.
recognized. So we're going to take this goodwill and record it here, 28,000. So now we go to the credit side. Then that they must go to the credit side. Investment in B. ELTD. We invested with how much? 100, 140,000, sir. So 140. And then uh, remember what I said about the SFP thing in this column, the NCI, you need to come into the effect now. Yo. So we're going to have non controlling interest because it comes as a result of this site, it doesn't balance this site. Because this site is 168. This side is 140. So in order for the two sides to balance, there's 28,000 shortfall, right? Oh. So you put that 28,000 here. So it will be your NCI. NCI, then put this to show that this NS NCI is going to go to the SFP when I'm doing my consolidations. So this value is the same as this. And also going to go to the SFP. Now we did number one, we did number two, we did number three. Now we do the last one, consolidation number four. Consolidation. Chance of annual theme statement. So we've got the SFP, the minimum financial position, as at is December, right? 2009. Then it's going to have none current assets. Which our current asset will be the goodwill. It will be the PPE. The goodwill recognizes how much? Twenty-eight thousand. Twenty-eight thousand. And the PPE will be the one for the subsidiary and the one for parent. For the parent, it was how much? 160 plus 110. I mean, sorry, plus 160 again, which is 320. So, this, when we sum them together, they will give us 348. Then we have the current assets. Our current assets is going to be what? The trade in other payables. Which it will be. Is it not trade in other receivables? Oh, sorry, it's receivables. Thank you. Receivables. The trade in other receivables of how much? 98 plus 110. We have a value of how much? 208. So our total thingy, our total asset will be five five six. We're still on the same page, right? Yes, sir. So 
So we're gonna go to the equities and the liabilities. Equity. We have share capital. Now we only focus on parent. The share capital of the parent is how much? The share capital of parent? 100,000. And then he's retain earnings. Okay. Then we're going to go to the non controlling. Because this non controlling is that thing we recorded here that's going to go to the SAP. So we have non controlling. Our non controlling is represented by, we said it's how much? 28,000. Then we go to the, we go to the current liabilities. Okay, just hold me for a second. Okay, let's proceed. So we have an uncontrolled interest of 28,000. Now we're gonna go to the current liability, I mean the liabilities. So do we have a non-current liabilities, which is zero because we don't have now one. Zero. And then we go to Current liabilities. Current liabilities. Our current liabilities is have trade in other payables. Trade in other payables is how much? 178 plus 130, which it gives us the total of 308. Then when we add all these, they also give us 556, which will present total equity and liabilities up to so far any question any question up to so far no question 
Okay. Now, we've got example six question partly on substitute edit discount, which normally this doesn't form part of this module, so it's not going to be shown. So we have a uh, question one, which will be similar of what we did before. Excluding that they were debentures for 10,000 in the parent and 10,000 in the subsidiary, which means some of the debentures they represent the thingy, the common items that need to be eliminated. And then uh, what else? Nothing. Yeah. I'm just checking this question. Nothing yet up to so far. It's only the debentures, elimination of the debentures on got by the parent and the subsidiary of the 10,000. Then after that elimination, there's nothing left. But I only have the debenture of the of this, the one from subsidiary because it will be the 10,000 the subsidiary less the 10,000 which went back to the parent. If you can go to the solution of that question one, you will see what I'm talking about. We're not going to do it because it's similar information. The only thing to us, the debentures which was added as a common item or intercompany group transaction. So go to learning unit, I mean page 18 of the learning unit number three. You see what I'm talking about? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. So now you can see the, that elimination because only if you can check on the pre-adjustment trial balance, there were debentures in uh, P limited for ten thousand, and there were debentures in S limited for twenty thousand. So that 20,000 in S limited, when you minus the 10,000, which is also all forming part of the one for A, we're going to remain with the 10,000 in B limited. So it means since we took the, since we took a, a, a thing, we took a B limited, so we're going to enter that into the, into account. So that's why we add the 10,000. So the 10,000 of the venture, the one added in the sediment of financial position, represent the one which was owned by the parent company. That's why it does not having anything to do with the, the acquisition of the interest. Because if it was the one from subsidiary, we were going to say 10,000 times 75% a week clear. Yes. Okay. So when we proceed further, now we have the comments. The comments is a setting of bank balance permitted. In terms of IS32 paragraph 42 states that the financial asset and the liability may be offset only when an entity has a legal and enforceable right to set off the amount intended to settle on a net basis. According to IS132, assets and liabilities and income and expenses may not be offset unless required for permitted by IFRI. In IS1 paragraph 53, Indicates that an entity reports separately both assets and liabilities and income and expenses, offsetting in the stream of profit or loss and other comprehensive income or financial position, except when offsetting reflects the substance of the transaction or other event, det detracts from the ability of users both to understand the transaction, other events and consideration have occurred, and to assess the entity's future cash flow. It is in rare circumstances that this condition of city of bank balance will be met. So the question two, what was needed? Let's see. On question two, the third paragraph of the consensus of financial position. And then we're having PPE unsecured loan from S. And then we have a long-term borrowing. So they, it was given to P and also the other one from S. So they're going to offset each other. So it's also that general which we're going to do the intercompany or intra-group. You will see when you do that general for elimination, 
and then uh, parent aspect. Yeah, that's the only thing that is different. So if you go to solution, you will see that after they did the analysis, they do the performance journal where they're going to now eliminate. Uh, they eliminate those uh, loans of 20,000, which they are shown in page 15 of the study guide. Are we fine with that elimination of intra-group loans? The rest remain the same. It's the similar, same pattern. You can just treat it on your own. Are we fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. Okay. So now it will be the end of this learning unit. So up to so far, anyone who didn't understand the learning number three, please notify me so that we can tackle that before we go to learning number four. So now we're going to deal with the consolidation of the wholly owned subsidiary after acquisition date. Now is this. Now let's look. I've got the small onion and slides, which I will share, notify me when you see them. Can you see my slides? Yes, sir. OK, the consolidation of a partly owned subsidiary after acquisition. So this is small onion and summary of learning number four. When a subsidiary is a partly owned, it means that the parent company does not own full share capital of the subsidiary. The remaining part not owned by the parent will be represented as an uncontrolled interest. So far, you are fine with that part, right? We dealt with it. You are fine, right? Yes. Okay. Now, in this learning unit, we look in instances acquisition was made in a prior year. So in this case, you will have that we are dealing with the financial year for year ending 2022, but the acquisition was not made in this financial year. It was made either last year or it was made in the year 2020 or 2019 and going back. So now is where we're going to show this. Since how do we treat them after the acquisition date? The partly owned subsidiary, which we all explain, there are hundred percent shares issued by subsidiary. The parent company acquired eighty percent, which is already dealt, and the subsidiary will remain with twenty percent of the share issued. Then this twenty percent, this twenty percent will represent the non control inserting the thousands of the consulted financials. Now, let's dissect. So this thing it was based on my previous uh, study guide so if you can check this page they're not gonna correlate so in in my case in your case here you'll be checking a uh, page let's see example one of learning number four so here in your case you'll be dissecting uh, example one like in example, they say the following are appreciating the financial approach for the year ended the June December 2006. So now the year is ending the June December 2006, but we have to check the acquisition date. So here the acquisition date was on 1 January 2006. So it was in the same year. However, there will be certain information that's going to happen between 2 January 2006 up to 31 December 2006. So whatever's going to happen between 2 January 2006 up to 31 December 2006 will fall under since acquisition. So if I edit this now, I will say based on the information appearing in page four. Is your learning also say page four, right? Then it number four. Yes, sir. It's fine. Is it's also say page four, ne? Yes, example one is on page four. OK, so now when we edit this, we will say example one on page four, you check the acquisition date. Subsidiary was acquired on 1 January 2006, right? We all have APN, eh? Yes, sir. 
Are we happy? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Well, I need I need the response because if you don't respond, then there will be any issues. There will be issues. So now the year end consolidation in our case is when it's on 31 December 2006, right? Next. Yes. Now our analysis of shareholders will be divided into three parts. One, at acquisition. Two, since acquisition to the beginning of the current year. But since this is also in the current year, it will just be since acquisition to the end of the current year. So you won't have this part. You won't have this part. Then from there, you do your consolidations. So I will show you this again when we are having example where it's going to have the acquisition which was happened maybe two or more years ago. Uh, let me check the example. I think it will be more in example of learning number five. The chances are high. Yeah. In this case, if you go to example, not even is it example. Yeah, go to example two on page seven. It starts from page seven. The acquisition of a whole own subsidiary at the premium. Fine. Let's forget about the premium part. We already know how to treat with the premium. Means there is a good will. The following are the pre statement of financial position of a limited and its subsidiary be limited as 31 December 2006. So here the financial year is 31 December 2006. Okay. Now we say we given the assets, we given the equities, not with information. A limited acquired its interest in B limited on 1 January 2005. So here the acquisition now is changes 2005. We are fine, right? Yes, yes, sir. And at which time the B limited retained earnings was 26,000. Fine. At the date of acquisition, consider the carrying amount of the assets and the liabilities be equal to the fair value thereof. No problem. We have a similar profit and loss, sharp. Then we proceed further. We have information given, sharp. Now they say draft the consistent of profit and loss and other comprehensive income and the consistent of change in equity and consistent of financial position as they in six. So now they want the information on 31 December 2006. So I'm gonna deviate a little bit and go to my Excel again. I will share the Excel again. So on your side, note these things. Let me go back. Note this, write these things so that when I go to the Excel, you see the timeline. We've got the, sub, the acquisition date is 1 January 2005. The year end is 31 December 2006. So our analysis of shelters will, if it's divided into three parts, it's going to have at acquisition since acquisition to the beginning of the current year. So the beginning of the current year in this case, it will be 1. January 2000 and what? Anyone who can guess? 2006. Yes. So it means the division of the three parts we're going to have at acquisition is 1 January 2005. Then year end is 31 December 2006. So our since acquisition to the beginning of current year, it will be 101 2006. So please write this information so that when I show it on the Excel sheet, you can understand it. I will give you just two minutes. Then get cast and you will be finished writing this. Second remaining.
I'm still going to share this thing though, but just write for now. Fine, let's proceed. Now on the Excel sheet, when I show that information, let me share my Excel. You can see my Excel, right? Yes, sir. All right. So dissecting this example two. So this will be example two. So we're going to have at acquisition. So it's like we are doing timeline at acquisition. It will be we acquired this guy on one. Oh, one two thousand and five, right? So starting from here, it will be since. Since acquisition. It will start from the second 2005 up to beginning of the current year. The beginning of the current year, which it will be 1 01 2006. We all find right. We yes. are still fine up to so far. OK, hold on just two seconds. Then I will be. So we have uh, the beginning of the current year. So it means from from here we're gonna proceed further. Then we're gonna have the current year. So here we're gonna have a uh, end of the year, which will be uh, thirty one oh six. I'm not oh six thirty one twelve. Uh, 20, 2006. Then we proceed. All right, then let's see for how we're going to draft this financial statement. So, are you fine with this timeline? How to present this at acquisition? The since to the beginning of the current year, then this portion will be the current year. Are we fine? Yes, sir. Okay. So now it means whatever information is going to. Sorry. Someone said something I didn't hear. Okay. I think we're, we're going to proceed. So we have. Um, let's go back to the information. 
So the information we acquired, the statement on 1 January, and then we have things that are happening during the year. Then from there, we're going to draft the consolidated. So when we acquired this asset, we were having the retained earnings of 26,000 in B Limited, right? And the share capital was how much? Of B Limited was how much on that time? Eighty thousand, sir. Eighty thousand, because the statement says there was a thing set at the date of acquisition. Consider the carry amount and the and the asset that it be equal to the favor. So it means whatever we see here is still the same on the date of acquisition. So now we're gonna draft our thing. So we're gonna also follow the same procedure of a. Uh, we do the interest and then we do the elimination like one. It will be the interest. Two, it's going to be what? I think now you should be knowing the steps. Two is analysis. Three. Performance journal. And the last one. Consolidation. Consolidation. Cool. So let's see now. And now let's calculate the interest. We acquired how many shares? How many shares were acquired by this guy? 80,000. 80, yeah. And he also was in 80. So it means this one was a, was a, this was not a partly owned, it was full uh, acquisition of 100,000, um, of 100%. We all have to, right? So it means all, we're not going to have the NCI. So it's, if, we, if we're not going to have the NCI, so it means we're not going to have that portion whereby we're having the SFP to be shown on our, when we're doing the SFP uh, site. So it means that site that you're going to see in the lineage number five. So let's see. We already have the 80%, I mean the 100% the as the interest. So two, we can do the, Analysis. Analysis. So we're going to have total. We have at since NCI. So this portion you're not going to use it because you are quite 100%. So the share capital is how much? Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. Okay. Share capital is eighty thousand. So it still represent the eighty thousand because it's in full. So here we still have zero up to so far. Because it's the date we acquired here, it's still zero. Retain earnings. How much is the retain earnings? 26,000, sir. Because they 26, told us that, yeah, because they told us that on the day of acquisition, the retain earnings was 26,000. They told us. We all clear with that statement. Yes, sir. Okay. Then we have zero. Zero site. Then we proceed. So this guy paid how much? Okay, when we add this, they give us 106.
Zero. Zero. So the guy paid how much consideration paid? 148,000. 148,000. So it means our goodwill will be 42, right? Now, remember we said we were here. And whatever we are recording here, it was like at acquisition here. At, uh, so now we're done with anything happened on the 1st January. We are done with this portion. Now we want to record things starting from here, going here. So now it will be since acquisition. When I have since acquisition, since acquisition, so it's since acquisition to the beginning, current year. So anything that happened during that period is the one to be recorded here. So now we have on the books of subsidiary, we have a retained earnings of how much at the beginning of the year? 54,000. 54,000. So we're going to say retain earnings. Of 54,000. How much was the retain earnings at the date of acquisition? No, 26,000. 26,000. 26, so the difference between 54,000 and 26,000 is what happened between this period from here to here. How much is it? How much? 28,000. 28, 28, now the 28,000, it's gonna, it's no longer coming in this column now, it's gonna come here because it falls under scenes. It's going to come come here. We are fine. Yes, sir. Yes. OK, then here's still zero. Now. We're going to go to the current year. Anything that's happened in the current year. Current year. In the current year, we're going to have the profit. What profit happened? How much was the profit happened in the current year? 16,000. 16,000. 16,000. Okay, hold on a little bit. I just want to. Answer this call and then we proceed. Hold on.
Okay, sorry for that. Let's proceed. We were on the things that are going to happen during the current year, which it was a current year profit of 16,000. And then uh, it's going to also on the scenes part, since it's 100% owned, we're going to also record 16,000 here. And then on the NCI, it will be zero. Then if you go to the statement of changing equity under the retained earnings for B Limited, beside the profit for the year of 16,000, what happened also? Dividends were paid, sir. Okay, then we have a dividend paid. The dividend paid is how much? 10,000. 10,000. And also 10,000. Then for this part, everything is recorded under the, the retained sure. earnings. Can you hear yes. me? Yes, sir. sorry to interrupt you. The 10,000, don't we deduct it? So don't we put it in brackets? Oh, yes, it should be in the brackets. Thank you. So from the statement of change in equity under the B limited, everything is recorded for since acquisition up to the beginning of the current year, including the current year. So now we may proceed further. Then we can say the 148, you add the 28, you add the 16, you less the 10,000, then it will give you 182 here. Okay, I will extend this uh, box after. It will be 182. So this one will still remain my thing. This will still remain as 148. Nothing's going to change to it. Then my since acquisition will be 28 plus 60 minus 10 is 84. Are we still fine? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. So the dividend which was paid, remember when you pay the dividend as a subsidiary, it means since this subsidiary is you are fully owned, so it means all the dividend they're going to go to the parent. Am I wrong? This dividend, this one, it means all the dividend they went to the parent because parent owned the full 100% here. Here's the part of the parent. It means this dividend is going to be eliminated, right? When we are doing the pro forma. Um, yes. Are... yes okay. sir. Now let's do our pro forma journal, the elimination part. On the pro forma journal, we said we're going to have debit, credit. Then we have three things to be eliminated first. As I said, this is just a repetition forever and ever and ever. The first thing to be eliminated, share capital. The capital. Which you're going to eliminate how much? 80,000. 80,000. Then we eliminate retain earnings. The retained earnings of how much? 26,000, sir. And then we have a goodwill recognized of 42. The goodwill recognized of 42. And then we have investment.
in BLTD. We invested by how much? We paid how much consideration? 148,000. 148. So this side is 148, this side is 148. So it means since it's a wholly owned, there is no NCI. So, it's 6, so do you notice that now since it's a wholly owned, there is no NCI to be recorded here? Yes. Okay. Then yes. we, we do the elimination of those dividends. This dividend paid, the portion caused by subsidiary is 100%. So it means we're going to say the dividend received, normally the dividend increase on the credit side when you receive them, right, as an income. So because we are eliminating them, we're going to say dividend received. Dividend received. By who? By a limited, right? You follow that part? Yes, sir. We, then dividend yes, sir. paid by B limited. Ten thousand. Sorry, this thing must come this side. So it means our performance channel is gone, is done. We eliminate all common items. Whatever remaining then need to be consolidated. So since these people, they, they requested everything, now you're going to do your statement of profit and loss. Statement of profit and loss. The profit before tax given is how much? Sixteen thousand. The profit before tax is sixteen thousand. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, I'm still on the hold. <laughs> the profit before tax given, yes. it will be the 24,000 plus the 16,000. Yes. Twenty-four plus sixteen. But dividend received by Parent, what must happen? You subtract it. Because they were already eliminated right here. They were eliminated here, right? Yeah. Then we minus the 10,000. Then how much we are left with? Thirty thousand. Okay. Then we proceed no, back. Some say 30,000, some said what? 30, it should be. Okay. So, oh. I think there's something I, I, that I, went wrong. I think I was checking on the yeah. ex example anyway. Hold on. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the, 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 exa the example that you are dealing with is example two, right? Yeah. So on example two, the profit before yeah, tax, it should be 35, 10, and 23. And yeah. Yes, sir. It should be like this. 85. Eighty-five, one, two, three, plus 23, then minus 10. We are yeah. fine right now. Yeah. Which is 48. Now we can go to the income tax expense. It will be both the one for parent and the one for subsidiary. The income tax expense is how much? Eleven thousand and seven, sir. Eleven 
plus 7. Then we have 18 in brackets. 18. Then we can say we have in the profit for the year. Our profit for the year will be Profit for the year is how much? We still happy, right? Yeah. Thirty-two thousand. Now, let's do the statement of changes and equity. The statement of change in equity. I will statement of changes and equity. It will be as follows. Now we're going to have share capital. Share capital. We have uh, Retain earnings. Then total. There is no NCI yet, remember, right? So the balance at the beginning of the year it was how much for share capital? Remember, the other one is the, is the uh, thingy. Is eliminated. No, it's hundred thousand. Yeah. Beginning of the year. Boy means beginning of the year, ne? Don't be confused. Balanced boy. It's hundred thousand, right? For share capital. So for yes. the for the retained earnings, how much was the balance at the beginning of the year? Now we're going to say the retained earnings of A Limited, the one for triple one. You see it, right? Yes, we see. We're going to say the triple one plus. The balance at the beginning, there were 28,000. You remember this 28,000? This, this, this was the balance at the beginning of the year. You still remember it? This. Yes, you do. So it's going to now represent our 10 innings as, as beginning of the year. So we're going to say 110 plus 28. Which is how much? One thirty nine. We all happy? Yes, sir. Then the total comprehensive income earned by the parent. The total comprehensive and is thirty thousand. Thirty, thirty years. So we say state because it's this one, right? This amount come here. We still happy. We still running the same page. Yes, sir. Then we have dividend page. A dividend page by who is the one paid by the parent? If you can check from the statement of change in equity, the one before consolidation, we were having dividend paid by parent as. 15th 
they go outside. We are fine, right? We all clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Then we can do the balances. So this will be balances at the end. Balances at end of financial year, which it will be same hundred. And then we have 139 plus 80 is 169 minus 15, then it's 154. We're happy. The total is 254. We are all happy up to so far, right? Yes, sir. Then now we're going to draft the statement of financial position. The statement of financial position. Already we have this part of 254 as our share capital will be the share capital is 100, retaining is 154. In total, there will be 254. So the trade and other payables, it was the one from the consolidations. So the trade and other is available also from the consolidations. And then the PPE is also for the consolidation. It's based on what we had from the pre adjustment trial balance. If you can go to page. Uh, 12. Check page 12 and tell me is there anything that you don't understand there. So you can also know that we eliminate all intergroup transactions, therefore we eliminate the dividends, the subsidiary paid to the parent. So that was the explanation of why we're eliminating the dividends received. So you can also do example three at your own own. There's no example three by right actually. There's exercise question one, which is long detailed you can just between question one and question two was now uh, i think i'm gonna do one of the question here then we go to learn unit number four the one which will be dealing with uh, partly owned it will be the question of a partly owned subsidiary after acquisition, like you are drafting the statement financial position of a partly owned subsidiary after acquisition, which now the that one you have to understand it because from now on they will be focusing on that one until we reach the end of the learning units, the unit number nine. They'll be dealing with the consolidation of a partly owned subsidiary after acquisition. It's very rare we deal with the, the wholly owned subsidiary after acquisition. So next week when we do learning unit number four. Listen very carefully and understand every concept that we'll be doing. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Um, but I believe it's going to be learning unit number five. Yes, it will be number five. Sorry, yes, it will be number five. 